All right. Hey, Mike. All right. So let me actually. All right. Let me uh, go to screen share here. All right. All right. Um, so again, welcome. Uh, glad those of you who are here could make it. Uh, so I'm going to be um, talking today about uh, this year's uh, one book, uh, which is Educated, uh, which is a memoir by uh, Tara Westover. And I'll kind of give some of the history behind it in a second. Uh, so this is, uh, this is, I didn't really title it that, but uh, traditionally uh, in the past, we've had a, a one book faculty panel uh, named after Sally Gab, a former member of, uh, uh, I wanna say the English department, although correct me if I'm wrong on that, Mike. Was she, was she a member of the English department? Uh, she was actually reading. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, she was uh, an early part of, uh, of one book. So, um, so yeah, usually uh, we have a kind of a faculty panel and or discussion at the beginning of the year uh, that's named in her memory. So uh, despite the fact that we are um, <laughs> uh, all online, I figured, well, we have Zoom, we can still make this happen. Um, so yeah, uh, so usually what the, the panel or discussion is, is just um, faculty members either sharing uh, ways that they're gonna use the book in the coming year and, and then some discussion on that. Um, I, am the, I am the one uh, faculty member um, this year. So th I, that's why I changed the name to discussion because I'm, I'm just gonna do my presentation and then if you guys have some thoughts, I'd love to hear it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so let's, uh, I'll just get into it. So just to give you, just to give you a little background into the book. Um, so it is, uh, so I feel like we've tried to, um, obviously, you know, we don't entirely direct uh, how the one book is chosen, you know, uh, in the past it's been the committee. Um, this, last year it was uh, through the Learning Council, but, but basically, um, you know, we don't entirely have control over what gets picked, but it, it seems like for the most part, um, we've had this kind of, uh, a few years it's a fiction book, a few years it's nonfiction. Uh, so we had a nonfiction book, uh, I think two years ago, Born on a Blue Day. So this is the first nonfiction book we've had in a few years. Um, so basically it's this, it's this, it's a really fascinating memoir. Um, so by this woman, Tara Westover, um, where she basically talks about growing up um, in a, a very, an extremely sort of, uh, I guess you might say fundamentalist Mormon family in Idaho. Um, that probably, that would have been considered extreme even for a lot of Mormons. Um, her dad was essentially a, sur sur her parents were essentially survivalists, but primarily her dad. Um, he, um, he, he was kind of a paranoid person who distrusted the government, distrusted public schools, distrusted like modern medicine. Um, so, uh, and this was something that I guess uh, when you read the book, like she had, has like seven siblings. Um, and uh, I guess it's something that the dad kind of became more paranoid about. So I guess the older kids kind of went to school a little bit, but by the time Tara came around, her dad was sort of like dead set against like, public schooling and like modern medicine and all this. Uh, so she, she didn't go to school. Um, she basically grew up, um, you know, working for her family businesses, which was her dad's scrapyard, which was definitely not ch child safe or anybody safe. Um, and then her mother um, started like an essential oils business, uh, which still exists actually. You like, you can find her family's business online. So she kind of like worked for her parents and sort of, you know, taught herself like little bits of stuff here and there. 
Um, and, you know, they were like really isolated. Um, there was, uh, as you can see in the description, um, there definitely are, were some mental health issues in the family that were not treated because the family didn't believe in modern medicine. Um, so like one of her uh, brothers uh, may have had bipolar or schizophrenia, but um, he, he was verbally and physically abusive. Um, her dad probably also had some sort of undiagnosed mental illness as well. Um, so just some of the things, you know, living in a, in a home with, uh, untreated mental illness. So there's a lot. Um, but eventually when, you know, Tara is in like her mid teens, her brother, her older brother, Tyler, just decides he wants to go to college. And so he kind of teaches himself what he needs to, to, to know to get into college. And he kind of is sort of a mentor figure for her. And the, so eventually she, you know, decides she wants to go to college too. And she like teaches herself and what she needs to know to pass like the ACT and gets into Brigham, Brigham Young University in uh, Utah. And eventually, you know, and, and through that, you know, she, so she steps into a classroom for the first time when she's 17. And, you know, she talks about, you know, she learns about the Holocaust in an art class, an art history class, when an art professor's like references it in relation to a piece of art. And it's like a very awkward moment when, you know, she like, she's like, what's the Holocaust? And her fellow students are like, what's wrong with you? Like, why, like, are you, are you joking around? Like, um, so like, it's just, so a big part of it is just like finding out what she doesn't know and like learning about herself and, um, Eventually, you know, she would go on to um, Cambridge and, and also Harvard. So she has a PhD at this point. Um, but but it's, just, it's just a fascinating, fascinating story. Um, but then uh, a big part of the story, especially towards the end, is, is, you know, as she's becoming her own person and growing, she kind of starts to lose her family. Because, of course, you know, her family has kind of insulated themselves in, in ignorance and, and all these things. And so, and, and kind of uh, makes excuses for her brother's abuse and stuff. So it, you know, she kind of, at this point, she's estranged from her family. So it's this, it's this strange story, you know, as she's growing in these certain ways and climbing the ladder of success, she's, you know, like losing her family as she, um, kind of confronts the truth about things and stuff. Um, so that's the gist of the book. Um, so I figured what I would do is share um, how I'm using educated and then I have some, some general ideas for how it might be used, you know, in some other uh, areas. Um, so uh, because it's a, it's a nonfiction book, um, I'm using, uh, uh, educated in just my English 101. So I'm, I'm in the English department. Um, so I'm using in just my English 101. Um, just because I don't, well, I'm doing a completely different theme for 102. So I'm using it for 101. And the theme, so the theme of the course is the educated person, which we all know is kind of a, an area of study. That's, uh, you know, what does it mean to be an educated person? What makes you know, what characteristics make uh, the educated person. Um, and, you know, it's kind of interesting. This is like English 101 is a gateway course. It's one of the first student, uh, one of the first courses a lot of students take. So it, I thought it would be kind of interesting just to explore that idea for themselves of like, what does it mean to be educated? Especially, you know, given our, our student population where you have um, a lot of lower income and minority students coming in um, with, um, you know, maybe certain ideas about education or, or family backgrounds, maybe they're the first in their family to go to school, uh, things like that. So I thought it would be kind of right to talk about this idea, like, well, what does it mean to be an educated person? Um, and maybe that doesn't always look like what we think it looks like, especially those of us who are academics. Um, so what we're going to be doing, and so obviously the, today, this was just the first week of class, so we haven't started this yet. We'll be starting this next week. Uh, this week has just been kind of getting our feet wet. Uh, but for the next three weeks, um, 
I'm going to have the students simply read educated. Uh, so the book is actually uh, divided into three parts. Um, and so, so we're just going to do a part of the book each week. So they're really going it, to, it, it, and it may be kind of an unusual way to start an English 101 class where we're literally just reading. But, um, but there's a method to my madness um, in that um, in reading the book, it's going to set the groundwork for all of the assignments they're going to do in the class. So, so they're going to read the, the book over the next three weeks. I actually, I was just working on this earlier. Um, so this uh, next week at the beginning of next week, I'm also going to teach them about critical reading. So we're going to talk about critical reading skills. And so as part of reading educated, they're going to have to practice critical reading skills. So they're going to, and I'm, gonna, I'm asking them to like, you know, share an example of critical reading by the end of the week. So like maybe they take a picture of a page in the book that they annotated or notes they took, um, or maybe they've summarized a chapter in their own words. So, so I'm already trying to um, bring some skills in that I would already teach in the class. So we're not just reading it, but you know, we're starting to think about critical reading skills. Um, and then we'll have, I'll have discussion forums for the students um, each week just to talk with each other about, you know, what's coming up in the book, what they're enjoying, what, you know, what they're thinking about. Um, so once we um, finish reading the book, um, uh, three weeks down the road, uh, the first assignment that students are going to do is a reflective essay where they're going to have to then write about their own education history and background and think about their own background and education and you know think about are there parallels are there differences to Tara what Tara went through some of the challenges she went through um, and, and to just kind of make it personal to them like you know as we're looking at Tara's education experience well now what is your own as a student um, and then from there um, I'm going to ask students to begin to develop an inquiry question about what it means to be an educated person or what makes an educated person. Um, that's then going to develop into their research project. And that's actually something that I'm going to be uh, having them even think about the next few weeks. So I created just a Google Doc um, that they'll be able to put questions in. So like the, the overarching question is, what does it mean to be an educated person? But then as we read the story, what other questions come up underneath that? Um, so they're gonna have that space to start throwing questions into um, as we read the book, but then they're gonna have to obviously sort of pick where they wanna go with that. Um, and then from there, uh, the second assignment's gonna be more of a rhetorical analysis where as they start to do research, they're gonna you know, do some analysis of uh, one of the articles they read, um, which I think is always a good practice for English 101. And then from there, uh, they're gonna do the research project, which is uh, an annotated bibliography. So they'll have to compile some sources uh, based on their inquiry question. And then they'll do a research paper at the end where they present the results or present an argument based on their inquiry question in the research they've done or present the results of what they discovered as part of their uh, question. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's how I'm using Educated. And I'm actually really kind of excited about it because I don't know if I've ever quite done uh, uh, an English 101 class that's this actually inquiry based because I've tended the past few years to have students write more kind of persuasive essays and like social issues and stuff. And um, that can be good, but I also have found that sometimes students just already, rather than letting the research shape their opinion, they already have their opinion and they just try and find research to support that. <laughs> um, so in this case, I'm really trying to build from the ground up um, in terms of uh, having them start with you know, this book that none of them have probably ever experienced and just kind of reading the, her story and then really thinking about this idea for them kind of from the ground up. Something that's just 
a, a topic that's maybe just let, where they maybe had less of a formed opinion already. Um, so that's how I'm, been, I'm using educated. Um, but educated certainly brings up a whole host of, I think, relevant classroom issues, such as education and childhood development, you know, thinking about just the way that she was raised by her parents, um, the conditions in which she was raised, um, religion. Um, so the, the family's faith kind of plays a role. So the dad kind of takes certain tenets of Mormonism, but I think takes them to an extreme where he has this kind of apocalyptic view of the world where he's like got to protect his family from like the bad government and bad medicine and all these things. And um, so there's that. Um, conspiracy theories and fake news, which is obviously a big issue these days. Her, her dad is um, very prone to conspiracy theory thinking. Again, like, you know, distrust of government, distrust of medicine, distrust of like public schools. Um, so that, you know, that in itself is a whole thing. Um, politics, it might not seem obvious um, how politics factors in, but I think you know, these days, as, as we see things like conspiracy theory thinking and stuff, and, and even um, certain like fundamentalist aspects of religion sort of infect our politics. And, and also think about things like the rural urban divide, um, how that impacts politics. I think that you kind of see that in this story. So she's from, you know, her family's from like extremely rural Idaho. Um, so that you can guess can kind of impact how they view things like politics as opposed to someone who lives in an urban setting. Um, psychology and mental health are uh, big issues, as I mentioned. Um, there's definitely some un undiagnosed mental illnesses in the family um, that impact the home environment. Um, so I had a, so I, I just want to kind of quickly go through some of the ideas I had for some of these things I mentioned. Um, so education, childhood development. So like Tara and her siblings are not allowed to attend school. Uh, they're sort of very loosely homeschooled. And at one point or another, they all help work in the family business. So as I mentioned, their father's uh, dangerous scrapyard. Um, there are some, some injuries, some really serious injuries that happen in the book just because like the dad doesn't really <laughs> follow safety procedures. Um, so, you know, she's like a kid and she's working in her dad's scrapyard, um, which would probably get you in trouble with, you know, child services. <laughs> um, so Tara's older brother decides he wants to go to college and he does. And like I said, this inspires her at 16 to teach herself enough to pass the ACT and to get into Brigham Young University. And, and then, you know, when she gets there, she's overwhelmed by how much she doesn't know. So like I said, she tells the story about, you know, she hears the, about the idea of the Holocaust in an art class and she's like, what's that? And just, you know, she talks about, you know, going back to her dorm and like reading up on it and just being like stunned, right? Like she never got taught, it's like she never knew this growing up. Um, so there's a lot obviously about education, um, but then just the idea of you know, childhood development, right? And circumstances surrounding childhood development, your environment, all that stuff. Um, religion. So like I said, you know, he, Tara's father takes some of their Mormon beliefs to an extreme in a way that like you see in the book, even their local church. And then like later when Tara is at uh, BYU, which is a Mormon university, like she has a relationship there with a, a bishop who would be a leader in the Mormon church, who um, is kind of exasperated by like, you know, the stories she tells him about what it was like for growing up and how her father thinks. So just even seeing that, you know, in, even in religions, you know, you, like there's people who can take certain ideas to an extreme, like in any religion. Um, but also Tara grows up with very conservative religious beliefs about her role as a woman. Um, and her father uses the Bible in very literalistic ways to justify certain beliefs and practices. Um, conspiracy theories. Uh, so this is somewhat tied into the dad's religious beliefs, but he's very prone to conspiracy thinking. 
you know, he thinks the public schools have to brainwash his children and lead them away from God. Um, he thinks that mainstream medicine is evil and poisonous. Um, so uh, one of the things that comes up in the book is, is uh, the Ruby Ridge incident. So some of you may be familiar with this incident. I think it was in the early 90s, late 80s. Randy Weaver uh, was a, kind of a cultish thinker. So he and his family, um, you know, they were holed up in their homestead in Idaho and the FBI came in and um, it was just kind of a mess. I mean, the FBI sort of mishandled the situation somewhat, but, but that, you know, that happened when she was a kid and she talks about at one point, her father, they were sitting around the kitchen table and her father talking about what happened to Randy Weaver's family and thinking the government's going to come for his family. Um, and he's definitely a survivalist in terms of like, you know, the way that he like um, tries to live almost off the grid and like, you know, stockpile to like protect his family from the apocalypse or whatever. Um, which again, that's like, that's right topic for discussion these days, right? Where, you know, we're seeing like conspiracy theories and fake news infect our politics where our own president, you know, promotes conspiracy thinking and you have groups like QAnon, which are kind of becoming mainstream now, which promote conspiracy theory type thinking. Um, so could certainly be a relevant discussion to kind of bring that out of, of the book. Um, uh, politics, you know, uh, as mentioned, Tara's father has very specific suspicions about the government and its intentions. Uh, it's probably safe to say that Tara's parents would be labeled religious conservatives. Um, Tara's father definitely thinks that academia and public schooling is populated by godless liberals who want to brainwash his children again. Um, and like I said before, um, uh, yeah, I think, you know, it'd be interesting, kind of like the, the, the book a few years ago, Hillbilly Elegy, that like came out the year that Trump got elected. And like everybody was reading it because it was talking about like the kinds of like rural voters that tend to support uh, the president. And so I think Tara's family would kind of fit in that same mold, um, uh, sort of rural, less educated people who tend to be more prone to propaganda and conspiracy theory thinking. It's just, it's just, it, this whole book feels like a case study of that in a lot of ways, when you look at her family and, and how they act and live. Um, psychology, psychology and mental health is a huge part of this book. So I feel like, again, the whole family would make for an interesting psychological case study. Um, Tara's father's definitely paranoid. And then later in the book, she's in a college psych class where the professor is describing bipolar disorder and she immediately thinks of her father. Like, she's like, that's my dad. Um, now, obviously he's, uh, you know, he's never been officially diagnosed, but she like immediately, like when she hears the description of bipolar, she's like, that's my father. Um, and then, uh, her older brother, Sean, um, kind of whiplashes between being kind and then physically and verbally abusive. Like he, it's kind of this, like, I don't know how to describe it, but, but almost like this grooming where it's like abuse, abuse, right? Gro grooming technique, where it's like kind and then abusive. Um, he experiences several traumatic head injuries working in the dad's business that just seemed to exacerbate those tendencies. Um, later in the story, um, and this is like I was mentioning before, like the estrangement from her family, like she eventually comes to the point where she, cause she kind of makes excuses earlier in the book, uh, like that somehow she's at fault for the way Sean treats her, which is, you know, is a common thing that happens with abuse victims. But eventually she comes to the place where she realizes like, no, like this is abusive. And she confronts her parents about it, but, but they make excuses for him and they kind of gaslight her um, in terms of, no, it didn't really happen this way or that's not what he meant or... So um, psychology and mental health is a huge part of this book. Um, 
So those are just a few of the, a few of the, obviously the, the things that I, uh, the ways that I'm going to use the book. Um, but then also just, you know, some thoughts that I had about, um, other topic ideas that could certainly uh, come out of the book as well. Um, any thoughts, responses at all? So Chris, you said you're gonna really devote the, really the next three weeks of the semester to them actually reading the text itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. What types of activities are you doing to kind of engage them in the text? Um, sure. The discussion boards, journals, like, how are we kind of doing that, especially now in the online environment? Right. Yeah. Let me um. Let me pull up my. Uh... All right. So actually, let me let me go back to share screen again. I'll show you guys. Um. All right, so this is like my week. Uh, this will be like next week, week two. Um, so like I said, um, they're going to look at, uh, so we're using a textbook, uh, you know, a regular just kind of writing textbook along with the class. So um, they're going to look at a section of that on critical reading. Uh, and I also have a, I have a lecture I'm going to post uh, that'll, that'll go in here as well. Um, so that, uh, so that lecture is going to kind of set up some of the critical reading stuff. So like in the lecture, I talk about um, like annotation, like how do we do annotation? Um, other critical reading strategies like, you know, doing our own paraphrasing and summarizing, taking notes and stuff like that. Um, so my goal is for them to, you know, read the textbook, watch my lecture and then get into educated. Um, so as you can see, uh, one of the things I'm going to have them do is is uh, a discussion board. So um, so this will be you know please share your thoughts on part one. So those thoughts could include your personal reactions, reflections on Terra's story, questions the book raises for you. So that that right there is really just to get them talking about the book and with each other about it. Um, even if it's just literally like wow this part was crazy, like, or, you know, just kind of reactions. Um, and then, and then I have a, so I'm going to be doing this. So I'll have a, a discussion board for each of the three weeks. Um, and then uh, for each of the three weeks, I'm also going to have a critical reading journal where they have to turn in some kind of critical reading related activity. So like I say here, that could include sharing a picture of a page you annotated, another piece of information that helped you understand the book better. So that's one of the things I bring up in my lecture is that often when we do critical reading, we have to go to other sources. So I talk about how like when I was reading the book, I sort of vaguely know a little bit about Mormonism, but I don't know that much. So I like went and like read the Wikipedia page on Mormonism to like help me like understand a little better some of like the culture. Um, so it could be something like that of like, hey, professor, I went and read this other piece that helped me understand the book better. Like maybe in the re they're reading the book and bipolar disorder comes up and they're like, I think I sort of know what bipolar disorder is, but let me look that up. So it could be that. Uh, it could be notes they took. And then um, I think I mentioned this too. So this is a link to the Google Doc I created. So this is where they can, um, as they read the book, if other questions come up that sort of fall under that idea of like what it means to be an educated person, they can add those questions in here. And so my hope is that we'll sort of create this document together with like inquiry questions that will then fuel uh, what we're doing for the research later. So, so those are the pieces that I, that I have now. Um, so we'll see how they go. <laughs> but I wanted to, yeah, I wanted them to, I didn't want it to just be like reading the book. I wanted to incorporate some of those typical 101 skills as we get into the book already. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my, that's how I'm, I'm planning to do it. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but I mean, I think, I feel like the book is kind of sensational enough in some ways that 
it's I think it'll be easy for students to like talk about it, especially the discussion board, because like it's just it's just a, such a strange experience. Her life experience is just so different from so many students that I think students are just gonna be like, what? like just want to talk about how crazy it is. So um, I'm hoping that's enough to kind of encourage them. <laughs> uh, truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, uh, anybody else have any any comments or thoughts? Um, questions? Hi. <laughs> uh, Hi, uh, Hi. Um, so I probably figured out I'm not faculty, but I, I really love this book. So I want oh. this. I um I read it and I just couldn't believe what yeah. that woman went through. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it, what you're talking about would be really great to, um, to help the students. I, I think, I mean, you, you kind of said what is educated. I think there's so much that could be put into that, like her yeah. journey of, you know, like where she started to where she ended. And yeah. I thought it was really important too, like, at the end, I, and I forget the, the like half of the half of the kids were like totally you know living in that old world, and the other yeah. half PhDs. It's like, yeah. how, how did that happen? Like, there's yeah. something there's something that triggers somebody, and yeah. maybe that's something to like grab the student's attention. Like, there's something that triggers them to want this education so much. Yeah. That they were willing to do whatever it takes to get it. Yeah. I mean, it's really a story of perseverance too. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm hoping too will come out with my, with my students is like, is I don't want it. I don't want it to be like super philosophical of like, what does yeah. it mean to be educated? Like part of it, it does like, and I think that's, that's one of the things that, you know, will hopefully come up is like, you know, what was different about these three siblings, right? Like they all grew up in the same environment, right? Like they all have the same background, but what is it? And it's not just their family, right? You see it in all kinds of families, right? What makes some people succeed, right? And other people just kind of stay stuck, right? Like, like, is it, and that's, you know, part of this is the whole nature versus nurture question, right? Is it like, is it like things in them? Is it conscious choices? Is it like their personality? But I think it's just fascinating discussion, but but I'm hoping, yeah, that students can get out of it too of like, and like, like I was saying, I think, I think this is a great book for our students because we have so many students that come to Bristol who aren't academic and like super smart, right? And they don't think of necessarily think of themselves as like, like, oh, I'm educated or I wanna get educated or like think of themselves as like, oh, maybe, you know, I could go to grad school and get a PhD or whatever, or like, um, not that they have to, but just like, but yeah, I'm hoping like her story that they'll be able to, yeah, glean some stuff out of it in terms of just like, yeah, what does it take? Mental toughness, curiosity, like th that's what I'm hoping too, is we'll talk about like, what, what are like the characteristics we notice about her, right? That like helped her, like willingness to learn, willingness to be open, like, you know, it was more Toughness. than willingness, though. It was like a strong desire. Like when yeah, she, discipline, she, right? Like she only had that. I think it was that like one math book, and you know, yeah. she was going through it, and right. And I, I think it was. It wasn't even a Bible. It was like a was some yeah. It was like a Mormon text or something. She yeah. taught herself to read with like Mormon religious texts. Exactly, so. and so like you know, the desires there, and that's like the message that I think that, that can be conveyed to the students. You know, you, you can do. I mean, if she could do what she did, like, yeah. if you put your mind to it, you can do what you want. You, you yeah. just have to let, not let those difficult, and she, oh my goodness, the difficulties that she had. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. I, I don't know. I think most of us would have given up at some point. Like, even yeah. when she, where was she at? Harvard, and her parents came to visit her, and yeah, that was horrible. I mean, can you I Yeah. Mean, her you dad know, is like, just like, kept going. Yeah, her dad basically disowns her as like you have to come back into the fold or else, you know, you're gonna go to hell or whatever and just like Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The it's grace for her to just good. be able to be like, I'm sorry, Dad, <laughs> like I just can't, yeah. Or yeah. even too, like 
I didn't even think about it until just now, but like I'm thinking of like there's the part where she's at uh, Brigham BYU, and like she doesn't have money, right? And like the support she gets that way, I was like, that reminds me of a lot of our students, right? Like students who are like, it's not just, it's all kinds of circumstances, right? It's your home life, but it's like financial circumstances, things like that. Like she wouldn't have been able to make it if like that church leader hadn't been like, here, I'm going to pay for you to like get your teeth fixed. Right? right. So like even just that, right. You know, like, yeah, it's about um, actually being able to reach out to, to others to get support when they yeah. your defined support system isn't really supporting you yeah that, i see so many parallels um yeah. and it's such a, like to me it's a, a story of hope it's like wow yeah 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 i'm hoping that we can um uh well, I haven't really had a chance to meet with the learning council yet, which is one book, what one book falls under, but I have some ideas for the semester and I would love to even try and get like a, it'd be great to do like a student panel of just like student stories of just like resilience, like perseverance, right? Like, especially maybe like some students who are like a little further along in their journey of just like, like what it takes, um, you know, to, to make it. Cause I think that's exactly what her story is about. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we'll be able to encourage students to read it just as it, yeah, even if you're not reading it for class, just to read it as a story of personal encouragement, right? Like, like you were saying, if she, if she can do it, you know, given everything in her life, like, you can, you can do it too. <laughs> exactly, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, that, I, that's my two cents. <laughs> um, yeah. I have a suggestion too for the future. I don't know if you've sure. ever read um, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. But I know I, I haven't heard of it. You should check that out. I love those kind of stories. And it's yeah. kind of, a, it's like a similar theme. Uh, he yeah. was in uh, some African country and they didn't, I mean, dirt, dirt poor, all these issues. And he just kept persevering and he ended up getting this scholarship. I think it was either to Harvard or MIT. Um, yeah. But it's kind of the same thing, and it and it's just to me, it just speaks like you know, if this person can do it, I can do it. Yeah, yeah. We the um, Mike, what was that? What was the book we did a few years ago with the autistic? Something born. Oh, born on a blue day. That's what it was. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. We do, well, we did that one as the one book um, a few years ago. And I, but I feel like it, it's funny. I feel like the nonfiction books we end up picking are like kind of stories of resilience. Cause so that one, it was um, about an autistic savant. Um, he was like, you know, he had like these, he had like growing up, he had these like social deficiencies, but he was like a math genius. Um, so. So we have a history of picking, getting, picking books of resilience when we pick nonfiction books. So, well, so the, boy, books. the Boy Who Harnessed the and, Wind, okay. You know, I, and I think I like your idea of, um, you know, the students sharing because I think that can help encourage others who may not be as far, far along. Yeah, 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 I hope so. We'll see. Um, any other thoughts at all from anybody or? comments all right well thank you guys for for coming i may end up we'll see just because only a few people show it maybe i'll end up doing this like next friday again to see if i can get more people in um or maybe i'll just share this video i haven't decided yet <laughs> but um